Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. I have a treat for you here because I have a really special pork butt I'm going to do a test cook on to learn how the Mangalista pork butt can be cooked in a pit, half competition style and half a kind of a backyard style. I'm going to show you guys how also to make a homemade pork injection for those of you who don't want to go out and buy a commercial injection and we're going to cook it to perfection using a little bit of the Slap Your Daddy rub to create a Mangalista Pork Heaven Perfection episode. Steve from MangalistaEstates.com uh, sent me these uh, pork butts. I placed a large order for pork butts and spare ribs and uh, pork belly. You can see from the cross section, the marbling is absolutely fantastic on the mangalista. And you can see the striations on the top. This is known as the Kobe beef of pork. We're going to do a special hybrid cook today because I am actually going to cook half of it with an in injection, like a competition style, and the other half with just no seasoning so I can taste the actual pork. The uh, pork shoulder or pork butt actually has a bone sticking out here. So I put a prop here as a teaching aid to show you guys that the bone runs through the shoulder. We're going to do about half of the pork butt competition style and the other half kind of a backyard style. And I'm going to do show you guys a special technique where there's actually no seasoning because you can get great flavor and the bark out of it even without any kind of a seasoning we're going to put on. We're going to show you guys how to make a uh, pork injection with pork base. A little bit of uh, barbecue phosphate here, which is uh, sodium phosphate to plump up the meat, create moisture and uh, flavor retention. We're going to do a light trim on the pork butt to ensure that all the bits that we don't need are taken off. I'm using a Dow Strong boning knife here. This is the Dow Strong Quantum Series. These are really great knives and uh, if you want to get one of these knives, you just go check out my Amazon store, link in the description. It's always good to keep your knife sharp, so I'm going to use my knife sharpener here, like so. Run it a few times. And uh, this knife sharpener is called a Rapid Steel. A lot of you are asking me about it, and you can find this on my Amazon store. This is a great tool that not only holds, but it also sharpens your knife. When I travel on the road and I cook competition and I cook in contests around the world, this is what I bring along to keep my knife sharp. Because a sharp knife is a you know great tool to use. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. So wipe it down. And we can do a little light trim on the meat just to trim off any of the parts that we don't like, we don't want, any parts that are too fatty. You notice I leave the fat cap on here, and I, I like the fat cap on because uh, it protects the meat from the fire. Uh, some of you told me that you like to cook it the other way. That's great. You know, knock yourself out. There's nothing right and nothing wrong about cooking barbecue. So long as you're getting the results you want, you everything in a barbecue topic is a three-hour argument and Jerry Springer fist fight. You know, this, this uh, Mangalista pork butt is actually so beautifully trimmed. I really don't need to do anything very much besides just go ahead and inject and season it. To show you guys how to make a homemade injection next. The pork injection is uh, made using a little bit of uh, sodium phosphate. We need about, uh, just about maybe just one and a half tablespoons of sodium phosphate. I have about 10 ounces of water here and I'm gonna put about one and a half tablespoons, that's enough. We're gonna use a little bit of pork flavor. I have a uh, pork base. This is a uh, miner's pork base and uh, my co-packer in Cleveland, Ohio runs a company called soupbase.com. David and Angela, the operations manager, they sell a lot of these pork bases, chicken bases, beef bases around the country. I think they're one of the largest uh, sellers of uh, uh, meat bases in the country, including seafood base and uh, Cajun base and so on. So this is a great way to use a uh, base to create a pork flavor. Of course, you can spend 20 hours making your own pork stock and boiling it down, but this is a fast recipe, so we just use the base. I'm going to put about one tablespoon or so, more or less depending on how salty you want your injection to be. I have about two tablespoons of the uh, phosphate mixed with about one heaping tablespoon of pork base to create kind of a pork injection. Sodium phosphate is a moisturizing and a plumping agent. And if you ever had chicken nuggets or had any kind of processed foods, uh, they all have a little bit of sodium phosphate in it because it retains moisture. It allows the uh, ions to kind of cause a repulsion, pushing the protein strands apart, allows them to penetrate the microfibrils of protein within the meat itself. 
I'm mixing this up into kind of a salty solution. You really want it to be about the saltiness, twice the saltiness of the ocean. And uh, you can taste that to make sure you have the right level of salinity. Twice the level of ocean is going to be about uh, 6 or 7%. And uh, that would mean it's about 6 pounds of salt into 100 pounds of water. I'm going to give it a little taste here first. That's perfect. So twice the saltiness of ocean water. And that's about right for a barbecue injection that you can use. Same principle applies whether you're doing it for pork, doing it for beef or chicken. And also the salinity also depends on how long you're going to keep the injection in the meat. If you're going to keep it overnight, you have to reduce the saltiness so that it doesn't have to be too salty in the final product. We're going to use a syringe like this to inject the uh, pork butt onto the right hand side of the money muscle. So the way the money muscle is, is this is the bone, the shoulder bone that comes out from this end of the uh, hog shoulder and uh, the money muscle is always opposite where this bone is sticking out which is this bone here you see like here you have the, exactly the same kind of shoulder blade bone in your body opposite this little end here is the pectoralis profundi aka money muscle that is a super good eating part of the pork butt and uh, we're going to inject on this side so i'm going to go this way on this side of the pork butt where this bone is sticking out on this side here the, the bone sticking out here is called the scapula. So in competition, we serve this part to the judges. We call it the horn or the scapula muscle because it's really, really good eating and you pull it from here. And in the contest, we always often serve the money muscle, which is right here. And uh, also some pulls and some shreds on the back of the pork butt. But this is not a competition pork butt episode. I have many episodes that teach you how to cook all the different steps to do a competition butt entry. But this particular episode is just to cook this mangalista butt just for test for flavor and for texture and to see how it overall uh, fares against a regular pork butt. Before we inject, uh, let's get some uh, pork Vaseline on the injector. We want to lubricate the uh, plunger so that it forms a watertight seal. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, inject this side. Those are the money muscles here. I'm going to go on this side of the money muscle. And we're going to put about maybe, I don't know, 8 ounces in there on one side. So I'll, I'll leave half injected, half not injected. So we're going to start here. Go about halfway like so. Get some flavor in there. You can uh, actually taste it both ways with and without the injection. The uh, mangalista pork is also known as the woolly pig because it has a woolly uh, hair on it. And uh, these are from a, special, a place in America called mangalistaestates.com. I found them on the internet based on one of my uh, YouTube viewer suggestions that uh, to try the mangalista pork. Uh, this is absolutely fabulous Kobe style pork because it has great flavor. It's actually originally from Hungary in Eastern Europe and uh, it's considered a heritage breed and it's bred primarily for, you know, kind of connoisseurs and for restaurants. A lot of restaurants uh, are trying to get this um, kind of pork into their restaurants because it absolutely has fantastic flavor. It has a high content of something called oleic acid, which is something you've heard me talk about when I talk about the Kobe beef uh, from Japan and American style Wagyu. The oleic acid has a you know monounsaturated fat that's very, very uh, unctuous and has great mouthfeel. When you eat it, it really kind of, you know, wakes up the flavor taste buds. This one here uh, was actually made famous by a Hungarian royal person. His name, I think, was called uh, the Royal Archduke uh, Joseph. And uh, this breed has been very popular in Europe and more recently made it to America. And more Americans are getting kind of exposed to this uh, cut of meat. If you want some, I'll leave uh, the link for the Mangalista Estates in my video description. You can go check out, uh, you know, talk to Steve. Steve's a super friendly guy. They're raised for about a year and uh, they weigh approximately 400 pounds before they're sent to the packing house. And uh, this has an absolutely sweet pork, fantastic flavor because they're finished on oats and barley during the last uh, couple of months of their life. I'm going to shoot it in here. So this is the scapula I told you guys. So you want to shoot it in here. These two muscles are called the horn. Uh, this is kind of a competition technique for those folks who are wondering why I'm doing this. Uh, in competition, we, we uh, call inject the pork butts to have better flavor. Like so, And uh, because the bone is here, I, I cannot get through the bone. See that? Right, right here. Right, I'm going underneath the scapula. 
trying to make a diagonal in, uh, injection so that it doesn't leak out so much. Right? So another black belt trick, we go in at a 30 degree angle versus going in horizontally because when you go in horizontally, it's going to leak out. So you come to my channel, you learn a lot of useless stuff like this. But if you're a competitor, all my tips I'm telling you is gold because a competitor would appreciate what I just showed them. A backyarder, maybe not because uh, you're probably not going to do this. Your poker buddies are not going to care if you serve them the factorized profundi or you shred the whole pork butt and you just serve them the whole pork butt because they're just going to enjoy that wonderful meat that you're going to be cooking. We're going to apply some all-purpose rub on it. I'm going to be using my award-winning USA rub. I'm going to apply a nice even coat. So a lot of you ask me how many different ways there are to wrap. There's at least six different ways to wrap. So doesn't really matter whatever way you want to wrap is fine. Just make sure that you just wrap it, be nice and secure. And then you can put it back in the pit now or you can put it in the oven. I'm just going to dump it in the oven for 275 because I told you many times once you wrap, the meat doesn't know where it is at, whether it's in the pit, whether it's in the oven, it doesn't really matter because BTU is BTU is BTU. Shut moment of truth we're gonna do a taste test let's begin with the money muscle I'm going to eat the money muscle that's on the uh, non-injected side first and give it a shot here Look how beautiful this piece is all right right here wow tremendous flavor a little bit smoky on the outside beautiful tasting crust a little bit of saltiness from the injection. The pork is absolutely like sweet, all natural pork, just super tasty. Tender, moist, really, really good pork. So this is the injector side. So let me eat the other side now, the non-injector side. Also looks very, very good. Try the non-injected side. It's just as good. So I think the injection was unnecessary. I think when you have good pork, you really don't need to do very much with the pork. Just put a seasoning on it. We don't want to use uh, like my type of seasoning, barbecue seasoning. Oh, rest you beans. You can go ahead and use uh, salt and pepper. It would be wonderful. Wow. Okay. So between the injected and not injected side, it's a tie. But just absolutely, absolutely fantastic uh, pectoralis profundi muscle. 
absolutely beautiful look at that okay let me now move over to try over on the uh, scapula muscle the horn the horn muscle right here the beautiful chunks of uh, horn meat here look like that Oh, that's a really delicious. All right, I'm gonna try with more chunks on this side here. Get some of the bark. That's what I love about pulled pork is the bark. I also noticed the uh, the meat kind of has a redness to it. See that? See that beautiful bark. And uh, I don't know if the camera is picking up the lighting. You know, maybe it's the lighting, the color, color balance is off. But it's just kind of reddish pork. So the Mongolista pork has a kind of a reddish tint to it. That's what you get when you get a heritage pork. It's, it's different from the commercial pork that we eat. The commercial pork that we eat in America is called land race, and that's the most common pork. So once you get a heritage breed like Korobota, Durocks, uh, and Red Waddles, Mangalistas, they all have a slightly different flavor. Try this one. Wow, this red, this red pork pork, super delicious. It has a, I don't know, kind of natural earthiness and sweetness to it that I don't really taste when I eat sort of commodity pork in America. Pork in America is not graded. It's not like prime choice and select. There's no such thing here. Uh, so let's move on to this part here called the white meat. Uh, believe it or not, your uh, Boston butt pork shoulder has a little bit of white meat in there. This tastes like chicken breast. It's called the cellar, the muscle behind the, the money muscle. Give it a taste here. Mmm. It's like super moist and super tender, and uh, it tastes kind of soft and fatty, which is kind of interesting because there's no fat here, but I think the, the fat is kind of interspersed through the muscle, so it, it's really, really good eating here. So we have a little bit of the kind of what I call chicken breast muscle on the back part called the cellar. So good, I'm going to have another piece here. I've eaten a lot of cellar muscle in the pork, but, but this first time, this is really, really tasty. All right, let's move on to something called a spaghetti. The spaghetti strands like that. I don't know what the, 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 the technical name is, but um, you can see this like a spaghetti. Very, very good eating also. So, it's kind of chewy, but good flavor. People sometimes ask me, Harry, why do they call it the, uh, the butt or the Boston butt of the hog? When this muscle comes from the shoulder, we started salting pork uh, to preserve pork. And once the pork was salted, they threw the big chunks of pork into a wooden barrel. The wooden barrel is called a butt. So this was popular in Boston. So the chunks of pork, salted pork thrown in the barrel, got the name Boston butt. So the butt is actually the name of the wooden barrel that the salted pork was sitting in. So people got lazy and then started to drop the word Boston and they call it the butt. The butt is actually the shoulder, and the real butt of the hog is actually called the ham. So a little bit of trivia, in case you guys want to know why it's called the butt. So more pulled pork here on this side here. You taste this one here. Absolutely gorgeous red meat here. Um, I am pork heaven. Let's move to this muscle here, the secondary money muscle. So in case you screwed up and you messed up your, your money muscle, here's the saving grace here. Uh, some, some teams... Uh, you know, they can turn this in as a secondary money muscle, like so, see that? So you can shape it and turn it in a box and pretend it's a money muscle. So I call it the secondary muscle, the trapezoidus muscle on this side of the hog. Uh, let me give it this one a, a bite. It's not as good as the money muscle, but hey, it's still very, very good eating. You can see a beautiful smoke ring on it, like so. Taste test here. If you pick the right fatty part with the meat, it's absolutely fantastic. All right, let's give a shot. You know, I have to say something about the Mangalista fat. The Mangalista fat is actually very prized to make lardons. Lardons are kind of like little mini uh, uh, pork fat croutons that you sprinkle on your salad. Uh, you do uh, some French style cooking with it. So absolutely fantastic. I know a lot of you are going to complain saying, Harry, you know, we don't eat the fat. But, you know, when you have a Mangalista pork, you just got to try it. You know, I have to admit, taste-wise, flavor-wise, texture-wise, Probably some of the best pork butts I've eaten. And I've eaten a lot of pork butts around the country. 
and uh, different breeds. Uh, so Mangalista definitely is a keeper. You know, if I were to be competing in contest, uh, this might be my uh, my secret weapon to try a Mangalista pork. It is a little bit expensive because it's a heritage breed, but uh, if you are all out in a com contest, you know, this just might do the trick versus a commodity pork, a Kurobota or a Duroc. So enough about me, me talking now. Beans, you ready for trying some Mangalista pork? He's wagging his tail, so let's feed him. All right, Beans, serving you some Mangalista pork today. I hope you like it. It's a special pig all the way from Eastern Europe. We cooked it perfectly with a little bit of injection on one side. So go, 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 Beans, go. All right, he's giving the shot here. Enjoying the scapula muscle, the horn. Eating some of the chunks, and he's saving the pectoralis profundi, aka money muscle, for the end. Look at that. Look at the beautiful smoke ring. Wow. Excellent. Super delish, right, Beans? All right, folks. Thanks again for stopping by for my Mangalista pork butt episode. Please uh, like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like this video and it brings value to you, please consider patreon.com Harry Sue and help me out to support me on this channel to continue to send you guys fresh content. For those of you who are going to be on Patreon, remember I have exclusive videos, cookbooks, uh, behind the scenes videos, uh, my random musings and more. Now, what I like about Patreon is it allows me to interact with you in a more personal basis versus receiving a glob of like 3,000 comments a week that I handle from YouTube. So until the next video, we love you and please stay safe and cook barbecue.